What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp architectural modeling tutorial for you. This video is actually more about creating and prepping sites for buildings, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to start a series, at least while everything's kind of crazy right now, I wanted to do a series talking about different architectural modeling and structural skills. So I know a lot of people right now are stuck at home and I wanted to talk about some skills you can learn while you're stuck at home, um, while you can't really get out. You've got some time with your computer. This is a really good time to develop your skills. I know I've been doing that with different programs as well. So in addition, I have open registration both to my uh, SketchUp Essentials course and the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course. So if you want more in-depth study on those, I will link to both of those in the notes down below. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I wanted to start off and I wanted to create a tutorial just kind of talking a little bit about using sandbox tools to do your site prep. So it was interesting. I actually wanted to create a different video about this. Um, I wanted to start with modeling kind of a pole barn type structure. And and how you can use that to create plans and layout and other things like that. But the first thing I got into is, well, I need to be able to prep a site um, from site information. So I wanted to talk through some different ways that you can prep a site for a building. And so to start off, what I have here is I have two different examples. And this is a CAD file I've downloaded from I don't even remember where. I've had it forever. And uh, I wanted to talk about two different ways that you can use sandbox tools in order to create your site prep. Because really before you can create a model like this, you need to create your pad in your site. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the Sandbox Tools extension, which you should be able to enable by going up to your Extension Manager and scrolling down and looking for sandbox tools. So that's SketchUp's built-in tool set for working with sites. And so what I have right here, and you may not have this data, this may be something that you have to kind of put together from points or survey data or something like that. What I have here is a CAD file. Um, you could also bring in um, maps data um, using the location data or other things like that. You might get this initial information from a lot of different places. But what I'm going to start off with is I'm going to start by going inside of this and creating a surface. So the way that you can do that is really easy with sandbox tools. You can just select this and then there's a button right here for from contours. So basically what that'll do is that will create a sandbox in here based on the contour edges that you have in here. And if I was to turn these layers off, so let's see, I think these are, there we go. So if I was to turn those off, and we'll go ahead and turn our hidden geometry off for right now, you can see how this has created a surface. And so we can use this surface in order to model out the spot where our site is going to be or where our pad is going to go. And so what we really need to do here is we need to create a building pad or a flat pad that we can draw our building on top of. And for this particular CAD file, if you look at the hidden geometry, you see you don't need to look at the geometry, you can see how this is going to get built into the side of a hill. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use sandbox tools in order to create a flat pad I'm going to point where we want. And so what I recommend is I usually recommend modeling out a flat plane that's going to represent um, it's, it's going to represent the size of your building pad, right? So for example, I'll go ahead and delete this one for right now, but let's say that I had a building pad that was going to go over here. I would usually draw a line up and then I just like to draw a rectangle representing the size of this pad. So in this situation, it would be a 40 foot comma 60 foot pad. Whoops. And we're going to want to do that with the rectangle tool. So I'm just going to click on this corner. I'm going to tap the up arrow key to lock this um, to the blue axis. And then I'm going to type in 40 foot comma 60 foot. And what that's going to do is that's going to give me a 40 foot by 60 foot pad right here. And so from there, now that we have something that's representing the size of our building pad, first of all, you want to make sure that you've got it aligned with wherever your building is going to go. So for example, let's say that this was going to be turned 90 degrees. I might rotate this 90 degrees and then align it straight up and down. So you can also use this point. You can click on this corner and then hold the shift key to lock this to an axis in order to more fine position this on a point on your hill. So you can see how I can move this by using inference locking until I'm right above a certain point. And then once you've done that, what you want to do is you want to use the stamp tool in order to stamp out a flat pad into your sandbox. And so we'll talk a little bit more about using the distance around it in the future. But for right now, I'm just going to stamp 
onto this um, onto this surface. One thing you may want to think about doing is you may want to think about saving this, um, just because with bigger meshes it starts getting kind of messy, and uh, I've seen this crash before. So I would make sure to save this with more complex meshes before you do this. But for now, what I want to do is I just want to stamp just by clicking on this surface. And so notice that what I can do is once I stamp this onto this surface, I can move this up and down to align it with whatever point that I want. And notice how what this is doing is this is adding additional slope on the front side right here up to my building pad and it's also cutting into my hill on the back side. And one thing to be aware of with this is there's also the ability when you do this to type in a value um, so that you can set the transition distance. So for example, if I was to click on stamp, right now you see how you get this red box around here and you get a little option down here that says offset of one foot. So what that indicates is that indicates that the slope area between your sandbox surface and this face is going to be one foot. Well, I can also type in a value. So let's say we typed in a value of eight feet and hit the enter key. And one thing that's weird about this is this doesn't adjust dynamically. So usually I hit the space key just to get back out of the tool. I reselect it and I click on it again. But then notice that when I reselect the tool, this is now updated to eight feet wide. So this gives me a vis visual indicator that the slope between my sandbox and my pad is going to be eight feet. So then I can click on this face and notice how I'm getting a lot more, um, I'm getting a lot more slope between my building pad and my sandbox right here. And so we're going to talk in a minute about adjusting this because really you wouldn't slope this down this way. I mean, you could, um, you might also build a retaining wall into this wall. So a lot of it depends on how you're going to construct this in order to create your pad. But for right now, you can see how that gives us a nice slope on the front side and then a slope up the hill on the back side. And so that's given us a nice building pad that we can now model off of. So for example, if we had a barn footprint that was gonna be, we'll call it 40 foot long, 30 feet wide, like this, you can see how you can now come in here and model this and you've got a nice flat surface to work from. So in a lot of ways, it's very similar to how you would do this um, when you were doing actual construction. And so the same thing would work on the other surface over here, and I'm gonna turn these contours back on. So this one goes back into a hill. Let's say that you wanted to build this mostly on top of a hill. Um, so what we could do is, first of all, I'm gonna create my surface over here, and I'm gonna save first, but let's go ahead and select this, and we'll use sandbox tools in order to create a surface from contours. And this'll take a second, because this is roughly four times this shape, because I duplicated this four times. Um, but now we can go ahead and we can turn this off and you can see how that gives us again, gives us the surface that we can then work on. So, and we can turn our hidden geometry off for right now. But now let's say that we wanted to do the same thing over here, but let's say it was a little bit bigger and we wanted to just start with the top and then work its way down over here. So what we could do is just draw a line up, draw the size of our footprint. So we'll make this one a little bit bigger bigger. Let's say this one is going to be, we'll call it 60 feet wide and we'll call it 90 feet long. So again, I'm just roughing out the size of my pad right here. And then we're going to stamp this down on this surface. So I'm just going to select this, my stamp, click on the surface. And notice how, again, I can set this with the surface however I want it to be. So in this situation, let's go ahead and say that this one is going to be fairly close um, to level with the top here, like this. So you can see how that top part is level and you've got this sloping hill right here. And that's a pretty big slope. So let's go ahead and let's create a wall on this back side. So let's assume we needed to use a concrete retaining wall on this back side. So what we can do from here is we're gonna go into our view show our hidden geometry. And then I am just going to start deleting out the geometry on this back side. And you do need to be a little bit careful when you do this to make sure that you're only getting the stuff that's a part of your wall, not anything else. Otherwise you can create some pretty big mesh errors, which can be a little annoying to clean up. Um, but what we're gonna do right here is we're assuming up to, we'll call it maybe this point, we're going to have a wall. So we're just gonna erase out this extra, like this. 
And then I am actually going to extend out my building pad just by drawing a line. So I'm just gonna draw a line off of this pad and I'm gonna hold the shift key to make sure we're locked to the green axis. And then we'll go ahead and we'll draw a line right here as well. But basically what we've done is we've just roughed out the shape of our retaining wall. So now I can just select this and I can just tap the F key and I can offset it in by whatever I think the thickness of my retaining wall is. So in this situation, let's go ahead and call it 12 inches. And then I'm just gonna close this off by drawing a line across these edges right here. And then we can just extrude this down and notice how this is coming in as hollow. If you tap the control key, then that'll go into create new face mode and it won't come in as hollow anymore. But now you can see how we could use this to model out our retaining wall along this face. And you do need to make sure this stays closed in right here. So you may need to draw a line from this point to this point just to make sure the surface is closed in. But now what we have is we have a footprint. Whoops. What we have now is we have a building footprint with a retaining wall into our hill. So you can see how you can use this to pretty quickly do your site prep. So same thing if we were to go back over here and we wanted a wall on this back side, we would just double click in here and you wanna make sure that you have show hidden geometry turned on so you can see all this geometry. But we're just going to erase out the stuff that makes up the slope on this back side like this. And then we're just gonna extend our pad back until it aligns with these corners. And we may need to rotate under this in order to finish it. Probably this one would just go to about right here. Then we could just do the same thing. And really you could just select these two faces or these two edges, maybe these two as well, and then just offset the edges like this. So again, we'll call this 12 inches. So what that's given us is that's given us the face that's gonna make up our retaining wall. So now I can take this wall, and extrude it up just like this. And again, you may need to do a little bit of cleanup in here, so the geometry on these things can get a little bit messy. Probably just wanna extrude this up a little bit more, so something like that. So the nice thing about this is it's fairly adjustable. Like, let's say, for example, that I didn't want this wall piece. I could just use the push-pull tool in order to get rid of that. And then we can just come back in and just close off the mesh just like this. So again, you may need to do a little bit of fine editing on this, but overall, this is a really easy way to get your site pads prepped and ready to go. So in the next video, we'll start talking a little bit more about creating the various building structures and how we can set those up to go into layout, other things like that. So if you're looking for more in-depth SketchUp instruction, make, your, make sure to check out my full course at the sketchupessentials.com slash course, or you can check out my SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course, which is specifically focused on modeling for architecture and layout. Um, so I will link to both of those in the notes down below. Um, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.